Outrocast. John, aside from talking to this specimen, how is your day going today? <laughs> Otherwise, it's going great, Darren. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Sometimes you have to ask that because you go, well, the person's doing interview after interview. They're answering the same question after same question. But I'd have to imagine with the thing with rivals that you're getting a mix of people who are sports diehards, documentary diehards, collegiate diehards. It really checks a lot of different boxes compared to, say, a thing about the Lakers. I think you're right. And again, I was just a talking head. I was not a producer like John Wertheim and others, of course. So my job is just to answer questions. So I was, uh, I was as surprised as anybody when I watched it. It was great. I was not surprised it was great. But the depth of it and the originality of it, that's very hard to do on pretty well-worn turf. And as you've seen, right. of course, they pulled that off. Right. When I got the pitch on this, they said, historian John Bacon. Do you like being called a historian? I ask that because some people like to downplay how much they know. They take the under promise over deliver approach as to how much they know. Whereas if I just say historian, you go, Oh, well, that guy knows everything. Uh, I see. No, what I usually ask for is just author. And that's what they put on the screen actually. So uh, that's fine. Uh, most of my work is actually current events. The football books are, and now I'm getting into history of other things like the great Halifax explosion, which have nothing to do with college football or sports for that matter. So you right. uh, can't worry about it too much as long as they spell your name right. <laughs> Does anyone misspell the name John Bacon? No. <laughs> Has there ever been a B A K O N? No, I, one I got I got Bagan B E G I N as in Menachem Bagan. Uh, my last name is non kosher, so that's not going to fly very far. So um, I see what but, you did there. Uh, there you okay. go. But I but I add the U in the middle so people don't call me Kevin Bacon. Otherwise, because Bacon they remember and John they don't, and without the U you kind of trip over, so you remember it. Um, I've interviewed but, Sosie Bacon and Kevin Bacon in different ways so i think you're the third or the fourth bacon but please don't take any offense to that i'm not offended by that in any way <laughs> well when you're filming a documentary as a talking head i assume that you were there for hours were you in the case there for hours and just a small uh, percentage well, there was my made? tv room so i can't complain about that but it was about probably about two or three hours uh the guy I was, the guys i was talking to though the cameraman and the questioners and so on, they're great and they're hilarious. And I think that comes across, even though you don't see them on camera, you can tell that everyone's having a good time. Uh, everyone's relaxed. Nothing seems stiff or, or you know, the usual rote answers. Um, and they did a great job. So, I mean, look, there are worse things to do than spend an afternoon, you know, talking about shooting the breeze about Michigan, Ohio State. And that's what we did. How much of what you said and what you saw in this documentary did you know well before you were involved with this versus homework and prep for this project almost all of it i i might have had a few notes with me uh but even the notes i had with me are usually quotes from my books that i've already written like the sigmund freud comment that he did use the narcissism of you no know, the conceit of small differences that was what it was uh the ones where that we are closest to are the ones we hate the most um and that's michigan ohio state in some ways so uh, that was not off the top of my head, but I already had used that quote in uh, one of my books. So, no, it's for the most part, I mean, I've, I've lived this thing, not as a player, not as a coach. And those guys bring a different perspective, obviously. But uh, as a fan growing up and then as a sports writer for many years. So, um, no, I, we know this stuff pretty well. And I think everyone on camera knows this thing pretty well. It's probably their favorite subject almost everyone they talk to. Uh, so, therefore, it's not that hard to keep your homework in your head. You say that, but I do know some of the VH1 talking head shows of the early 2000s, they were feeding the lines and the pop culture references to some of the comics. I believe that's probably true. That did not happen here. <laughs> <laughs> right. So already, you know, to recap what we've talked about, you made a Menachem Bacon reference right there. Ohio State, you talked about a Halifax related historical thing. Are you a good person to take to trivia night or are you one of those people that like if it happened after 2006, I don't know. Uh, kind of both. Um, I'm really good at trivia to a certain point and the current pop music the last 15, 20 years, movie, TVs, I've, I've been busy, man. Uh, I've missed a lot of it. So that stuff, my seven year old son's got to grow up fast and help me out because I need to help. So having said that, I once tried out for Jeopardy and got my butt kicked, which uh, I wrote an article about it. That's the good news. But uh, it was, I'll take humility for 500. And I got a whole bunch of it. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I always thought I would do well on Rock and Roll Jeopardy, where you see that Mark McGrath is considered the top genius of all time. And definitely, <laughs> I, I think you could smoke him on that one. I think I could, too. I like our chances in that one. Yes. Uh, where does music rank for you overall in terms of your cultural knowledge? I ask that because I find that almost everyone who's a diehard for sports, Chuck Klosterman, yourself, they also seem to have that rock and roll background. Yeah. I mean, Charles Pierce, I put in that category, um, Esquire columnist, um, uh, big time. But again, after the last 15, 20 years, I'm not worth much. Um, but it's funny how even when I teach at Michigan, even my students who are, you know, 20 years old, they know all the stuff from the seventies because their parents or maybe even their grandparents, um, they all listen to it. So there's a 15, 20 year period of music that everyone seems to have maintained as part of the common culture, which we really don't have since. I agree with that. So when you're watching an NFL game or you hear the marching band in the college football game, you probably hear them doing ACDC and Van Halen and that kind of stuff that lives on. You still hear CNC music factory. It's almost like 1978 to 1995, everyone knew everything regardless of what they liked. Yeah, I think it's about right. I mean, and now it's all balkanized. So, you know, based on your Spotify, whatever else, there's a whole pocket over here, a whole pocket over there. And like politics and like our news, there's very little crossover. So the common culture is in jeopardy. And here's your segue. Stick with me, by the way, on this one, Darren. Uh, look, Michigan, Ohio State is one of those things that transcends just about everything. Yeah. Uh, strata. We don't even care, by the way, if you went to either school. I'm willing to bet, in fact, I know from stats that about a third of the fans in both places on any given Saturday did not attend either school. Um, so it's not about that either. Um, mm -hmm. It transcends the generations. This is one of the few things you will share with your grandparents. Uh, so in that sense, this is one of the last remaining anchors we have of a bona fide shared culture. I remember to reference Chuck Klosterman a second time in an interview when he was talking about the death of Johnny Carson. That was one of the last things that everyone knew who that was and what that was. I think you're right. I never thought about it that way, but Ohio versus uh, Ohio State versus Michigan, the Army versus Navy holiday bowl game. There's very few things, and they all seem to be in the sports realm that everybody knows or at least can relate to. They are exactly right. Uh, and you're and Klosterman got it right. The Johnny Carson effect TV, as Bruce Springsteen said, there's 500 channels. Uh, right. One of my students the other day did not know who Robert Redford was. And OK, so that's gone. I know. Thank you. <laughs> but they know at least they've heard of Sundance, which he founded, whether or not they know. They have that. heard of, yes, he'll probably be more famous for that in Newman's popcorn than the actual movies. But OK, <laughs> we'll, we'll take what we can get. But that's also why this thing still matters. What's amazing is it still matters now. Yeah. I mean, how many things do we still do together? When I was growing up in the 70s watching this game, it's ABC, NBC, CBS, that's it. We didn't have charter schools, private schools, homeschooling. We got in a bus and when you got off, that's your school. That's not a whole lot of thought went into this. Um, and now all these things got a million choices and we're all divided on so many things. Uh, but in that, in those stadiums on a Saturday, we don't care how old you are, your race, religion, your educational background, your politics, thank God for at least four blissful hours. Um, <laughs> that, that, the whole thing's getting tiresome, obviously. It's Definitely. wonderful to shut your brain off of everything else other than it's third and three, this is big. And, and it matters to us. The last question before I let you go, Rivals is obviously the big deal project for you right now. Are you allowed to say what's next or do we just have to follow you on the socials? Uh, I'm on Twitter way? and all that. I've got a podcast, Let Them Lead by Bacon.com with plenty of Buckeyes and Wolverines on it. And the next book I'll announce in probably a week or two. Awesome. Looking forward to that book. Looking forward to the next podcast episode. Thank you for your time, John. Darren, thank you. Your room rate is much better than mine, by the way. Well done. If the wife lets you put the stuff up, you put the stuff up. <laughs> Outrocast. <laughs>